The city of Vilnius, once known as the Jerusalem of the North, was a thriving center of Jewish life. Of the 240,000 Jews in Lithuania before the Holocaust, less than 200 remain. And I have come here to trace the imprint of that Jewish heritage in the archives and synagogues, in the cemeteries and mass graves, and in people's stories and memories. My journey begins in Panar. This is where 100,000 people, most of them Jews, were murdered. They were marched here on foot or herded into lorries and railway cars, placed in a waiting area, told to undress, their valuables removed, then led, blindfolded, naked, to the edge of the pits where they were shot until they fell in. Those who did not die immediately were buried alive. At the end of a day's shooting, the pits were covered with a layer of sand. Sometimes, this task was completed by Jews themselves, who were then murdered by the Lithuanian firing squads. The massacres took place on an almost daily basis between July 1941 and July 1944, and were carried out by the German SS and their Lithuanian riflemen. Yet today, the 30th of August, 2008, the scene at Panar is tranquil. A slight breeze fluttering through the trees. There are no birds overhead. Beneath my feet, the earth is soft, almost trembling. The foliage, I notice, has an unusually vibrant hue. I think of all those whose bodies have seeped into this soil and nourished it, and colored this grass such a deep, rich green. Not a hundred yards from here, children play with a water hose. A small dog runs across the track. Teenagers gather outside the station. They are oblivious to the horrors that have taken place in their village, unaware of the stain of complicity that has soaked through their country's past. Hasia, who is 87, is among the very few to have escaped the Vilna ghetto alive. Her husband, Boris Friedman, was the first to take up arms and head for the forest. When I meet her, she tells me about the night he left. No. Софочкой ее звали тоже. И с нашим Велвеле. И вдруг меня вызывают ребята. И говорят, отбои группы ничего не имеем. Не знаем, что с ними стало. Говорят, что они попали в засаду. И говорят мне, выходит вторая группа, несмотря на, на ничего. Он нам сказал, во второй группе, чтобы не было, чтобы вы ми меня взяли. Если ты с нами пойдешь, выхода тебе сейчас домой нет. Или ты идешь, или ты идешь домой. И я стою и думаю, что мне делать? Оставить детей и родителей или идти спасаться? Если нет, может быть, я их смогу спасать. Там были знакомые, которые хотели детей взять. И что? Или их, может, спасу. Уйду на всех. Это... И они мне говорят, 
Вот сейчас решай, или да, или нет. Ну и я пошла. И я вот говорю, что закрытыми глазами я сказала да. А как вы думаете, если все бы повторилось, какое решение вы бы приняли? Я бы не пошла. I wouldn't go. Это меня всю жизнь мучает. Because it stays with me and tortures me all my life. Это мою всю жизнь мучает. Eight days later, the ghetto was liquidated. Hasia's mother and father-in-law, her niece Sophia, her little son Velvola, were murdered. She asked me what I think of her decision, if I judge her. I am a mother of two grown sons. I cannot imagine leaving them to die. But as I listen to her, I am filled not with contempt for her choice, but with loathing for the men who remove from her all other choices. We visit Beryl next. He is one of the only remaining Orthodox Jews in Vilnius. Even though he is 84, blind and lives alone, he has insisted on preparing lunch for us. Hello. 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 coming now. Ruta? Yeah, she's coming now. Aishtia. Yeah. Aishtia. Yeah. 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 Hello. How are you? Good? Abadiana. Abadiana. Yeah. I give a kiss to her. Yeah. Yeah. Hello. Yeah, Mari, you speak a little bit. Take, take, take. Thank you. Viskas. No, it's viskas. Get ready. Пели, поскольку очень им мазок, как для гвалды он будет давить. Ман взял остальные какие-то ребята. Я ворчал по ждеву. Вот еще мазок стерил. Мазай турел, мазай, мазай. Мазай турел, как раз буквы ловили. Мазай турел. Мазай турел. Ну, да, а что делал? Поталкал, а что нет, какие-то ребята, я его не мажу мятой. Музыка Parada, jūtų raus, į kalį ir policiją juos saugoja tų fasiškų. Ačiū mažai per gyvenimą. Nu, ką padaryti? Viena būčia gerai, kad gyvas likai. Atvis, varbėlsa, kad kiek žuvo, kiek žuvo, oj, kai vaisu. A kaip zauras žinant, ką pats mūsų mistelį pajašim pasakojau, kad sandalį pastatė, ant žmonės gyvus. Varyta už virus į darbą kiekvieną dieną, ketras kilometrų, nemaksti nuo vidų klistotė. Ir jie statė sandalį. Tai vienas sandalį sako, jie reikia labai giliai įskast, kadangi, sako, mes čia saldėtų patraisim. Kai giliai įskati, nedavė jiems pasikelti už pilis su mašvalantiu, gyvų žmonės ir viskas. Ir niekoj nesako, koks sandalys. Žmonės nesako. Reikia atkasti, už kalus palaidot. O, tai čia įzavra, a? But he did survive. So.
I asked Beryl how he spends his days since he has lost his sight and no longer works. He answers me with one word, the synagogue. Each morning a woman arrives at his door to walk him a few hundred yards down the road. It takes 45 minutes. In rain and hail and snow, he makes the same journey. There were four rabbis in his mother's family, he tells me proudly. And when I inquire how he keeps going, when the community is so diminished and his own health so frail, he says simply, I go because I must. I say Kaddish for my mother and father, both of whom I have just lost. Saying Kaddish in Vilnius is unlike saying it anywhere else. The men below me repeat it in a never-ending cycle of grief. In this city, the process of mourning cannot cease. There are still too many souls to ease into restful sleep. The men who make up this congregation are in their 70s, 80s, and 90s. They recognize that they are part of a fading people. They come here morning and evening to pray, to remember, to hold on to the vestiges of their community. With every passing year, there are fewer and fewer of them. I wonder, when they are gone, who will take their place? Our first weekend here, Vilnius Day was celebrated. From beneath our balcony on Gedimino Avenue, the aroma of smoked sausage, the sound of music playing and children laughing, drifted up towards us. Across the street, I noticed a small boy playing with a potter's wheel, his hands deep in clay. It occurred to me as I watched him that this was a celebration of culture, of life being allowed to happen, of a boy allowed to be a boy. For the men and women who share their stories with us, these simple joys have been erased, and the memories are still so raw. Paka patoma ni rishili ubrat shikh. Priyakhali vaiska SS. Yo uje znali sto eta uje buit akanchatnay rastrel eta bu sarak treti god. I окружили гетто, войска стояли там гора была, где кладбище было на горе, они расставили пулеметы кругом, ну и начали ходить по домам, собирать, кто сидит дома. Стреляли в окна, ну и счастлив тот был, кого вот так попал и все. Зашли в дом, а в этом доме был в кухне, вы знаете, подвал. Юсупан тут в полу открывалась. Папа говорит, вы залезаете все в подвал, а я залезу на чердак, там тоже было. Через потолок на чердак он мог закрыть. Чердак Юсупан. 
залез на чердак, посмотрю, когда немцев будет меньше, мы выйдем, и, может, нам удастся выйти. И всех нас посадил в подвал. Говорит, вы заходите, а мама не могла, она кашель ей все время не давал жить. Она говорит, не пойду, я всех выдам. Но мы сидели в подвале, пока немцы не пришли в наш дом. Зашли и все развернули, разбили там, рассыпали, они даже с подушек перья выпускали, все они. И они сами завалили этот ход, который был открыт. Ну, все, они вышли. И да, при этом я слышу вдруг, а, ком, ком хир. Понимаете? Иди, иди сюда. Они увидели родителей. И тут же на месте выстрел. Я там стала плакать, но они меня удержали. Ну, ушли с нашего дома. В следующий, в следующий, так вот кончали со всеми понемногу, только то искали. А потом со всех сторон подожгли гетто. As I walk through this city, their stories walk with me. Hasia's fateful decision. Beryl's unending loneliness. Gita's haunted memories. With all they've seen. Why stay? Even now, more than 60 years on from the atrocities, the threat to Jewish people lingers. On the 11th of March, 2008, hundreds of neo-Nazis took to the streets of Vilnius. They waved swastikas and chanted, Juden raus, Jews out. Three things stand out for me as I watch. One, that most of them are young. Two, that the police did not stop it, but instead escorted it. And three, that these are ordinary, everyday folk, the kind of people who decades earlier turned on their Jewish neighbors and murdered them. So what, I wonder, has kept them here? One after another, they tell me that they stay for the cemeteries. They will not leave their loved ones behind. El mole rachamim, shochein bam raimim, hamatze manucha na kano, al kadki kashkino bamalos kadari mutkari mrakhe, et nismas shakakola mu bavur, neden eten sedoka bat kaskaroni shmaso. El mole rachamim, shochein bam raimim, hamatze manucha na kano, al kadki kashkino bamalos kadari mutkari mrakhe, et nismas shakakola mu bavur, bisrol bisrol hachai. For some, the act of remembrance is quiet and still and private. A whispered prayer, a stone placed at a gravesite, a silent reflection. But for others, remembering is a far more active, emphatic and public process. Tucked behind a back street, and almost impossible to find, is the greenhouse. A small Jewish museum, and perhaps one of the only places in the country where the true story of the Lithuanian Shoah is revealed. It is to tell this truth that Rachel Kostanian rises each morning and treks across the city, up the steep incline, to what she calls her second home. She has been making this journey every day for over 20 years. When I ask her why she does it, even now approaching 80, she says simply, for my family in Ponar. 
keeping Jewish culture alive has become her life's work. Uh, one day into the streets going to work and I see on the pole a big Mogendovit. And my first thought, my first reaction was tremble. What is that? They send us to a camp? Next second I run up, I see the word exhibition. Then I, I felt better, much better. And it will be Jewish books and Jewish items, whatever. Published for the first time after dozens of years, I didn't see the word printed Jewish or Jew somewhere officially. When you saw, when you went to that exhibition and you saw those Jewish artifacts and those books, what, 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 can you describe a little bit how yeah, you felt? Yeah, I that? was so excited to see uh, candle lighters, to see the um, uh, talitim, to see the kiddush um, glasses, to see Jewish books. Of course, the books is what mainly touched me, is books and pictures and art. It was something outstanding. It was such an event in my life. The, the culture behind it, the, the um, regret and the pain that we couldn't have had it, that I couldn't have had it for my son before, that, that they made us uh, nameless, homeless, because a culture is home, rootless. A culture is home, is roots, name, a name, a family name, that things that we could be proud of, writers, our writers, our artists, our scientists, Nobel Prize winners. For the first time I encountered it, it was a great, um, uh, it, it was such excitement, it was such a joy, it was such a, a you know, a type of a revenge. You see, you see, we are, we are something, we are, among us there are great people, it cannot be that we are despised. It's not true, it's not just, it's, it's not, uh, it cannot be, it cannot go longer. Joseph Levinson returned to Lithuania after the war and immediately went back to his home shtetl of Vessier. There, he was greeted by stories of mass murder. Standing by the grave where his father, his cousins, and many of his neighbors had been executed, he made a silent vow that one day he would do something to mark their deaths so that the world would know what had happened there. It took 50 years before he could realize that promise. When Lithuania gained independence, he traveled the country up and down, three times over, visiting each mass grave and erecting a Jewish memorial to honor those who had perished on that soil. On one of our last days in Lithuania, he offered to take us to the site of that long ago pledge. Over 10 hours in our company, Joseph never once broke. It was only when we stood in front of the mass grave where his father and relatives are buried and he named them one by one and read in Yiddish the inscription that just for a moment grief washed over his face. Thank you for bringing us there. Nowhere is the spirit of Jewish resilience and remembrance more alive than in Fanya Bransovsky, a former partisan. She's 86 and the librarian at the Vilnius Yiddish Institute. She helps ghetto and camp survivors, teaches Yiddish, conducts tours of Jewish Vilna, 
and takes people to the forts where she was part of the Jewish resistance. Moments before the ghetto was liquidated, on the 23rd of September 1943, Fania slipped unnoticed through a gate and watched from across the street as tanks rolled in. She made her way out of the city on foot, through the forest to the partisan forts. Today, these forts are slowly sinking into the earth, and with them will disappear the history of those whose lives were saved here. Fania left behind her mother, her father, her sister, and all her extended family. When she emerged from the forest, she looked for them everywhere. One day, she met a woman who told her that her sister Rivka was still alive. Every day for a month, she went to the train station and waited. Finally, she met the woman again and said, I haven't found Rivka yet. I thought she was alive. But who told you that? The woman asked. When Fania tells me this story, I ask her, if she could meet her family again, what would she say to them? She tells me this. Они бы видели. Я бы им сказала, что я пыталась за них отомстить, что я их люблю, что я все время о них думала. И хотя говорят, надежда последней, я все-таки долгое время еще верила, думала. I came to Lithuania in search of fragments. What I found was far greater. A group of people whose compassion, resilience, and astonishing courage have touched me deeply. I ask what they want their legacy to be. They answer, kindness, goodness, love for others. This is what I take with me.